When you tear out a man's tongue, you're not proving him a liar. You're only telling the world that you fear what he might say. Ah, uh, tis the season for book bannings. Nothing says intellectual honesty and integrity like banning books you don't like. And it appears the right has become quite ban-happy. Across the country, mostly in red states, hundreds, if not thousands of books have been banned under the pretense of protecting the children. Conservatives claim that the bans just remove sexually explicit and racist material. However, as we will see, the vast majority of the books that have been removed contain no such content. Instead, the books were removed because they feature minority, gay, and transgender characters, which the right seems to treat as evidence of a leftist agenda to groom, to literally sexually abuse their kids into a neo-Marxist ideology. Now, normally I would present the topic in question, make my point, and then dismantle the counterpoints in context. However, I've noticed that conservatives tend to comment without watching the entire video, so they never realize, and I'm being generous, that I address their right-wing talking points. So I'm going to refute their counter arguments now while I still have their attention. So let's get the easy one out the way. Yes, there are people on the left censoring books. I saw the articles about Raul Dahl and James Bond, and I've made videos about left wing censorship before. That's not what this video is about. So you bringing that up is nothing more than what about ism. We're not talking about the left. We're talking about the right. Stay on topic. Two, yes, the left has tried to weaponize whiteness against white people and engaged in the very racism they claim they oppose. That's also not what this video is about. We're not talking about the left, we're talking about the right. Conservatives in America have a well-documented history of opposing any discussion of race or racism, especially when it's about black people's experiences at the hands of white people. Three, Yes, the alphabet people have become obsessed with their identities, and some of them insist on presenting this to kids. That's not what this video is about. We're not talking about the left, we're talking about the right. The right has a well-documented history of opposing the gay and trans communities, and specifically accusing gay and trans people of being a sexual threat, particularly to children, because they are gay or trans. You can deny this all you want. Your own words, actions, legislation, and any random video from Matt Walsh prove you wrong. And for those who will feel compelled to claim that I'm lying or just repeating left-wing talking points, I've included the links to all the articles I mentioned in the video in the description below so you can read them for yourselves. So, if I see any comments mentioning the previous points as some sort of gotcha, I'll know that you didn't watch the video and that you don't have one bit of intellectual honesty and that I don't have to be gentle with you. There is a problem in America. The right wing loves to ban books. This is nothing new. This has happened my entire life. Whenever there's someone coming to censor or ban a book, they're inevitably conservative, Christian, and the least informed people on the planet. What is new is the scale of it. This isn't a handful of bored Christian moms pulling Harry Potter from the local library because they're afraid it'll turn their kids into Wiccans. We're talking hundreds of books per state pulled simply because someone filed a complaint that the book is a threat to children. Case in point, Vicki Baggett from Florida, the high school teacher who wants to ban 150 books she claims aren't appropriate for any students. This includes books like When Wilma Rudolph Played Basketball. You might wonder, who in the blue hell is Wilma Rudolph? Well, she's the legendary sprinter who won three gold medals at the 1960 Olympic Games in Rome. As a child, she had polio, wore a leg brace, and was told she'd never walk without it. Her achievement of winning the Olympics is an impressive feat that you'd think any kid should know about, unless you're Vicki Baggett. According to Lil' Miss Karen, the book is objectionable. As she explained on the reconsideration form that totally doesn't look like it was filled out by a six-year-old, the book opines prejudice based on race, and its sole educational purpose is race-baiting, so it shouldn't be recommended for any educational media. When Popular Information interviewed Lil' Miss Karen, she said that the book puts down and trashes those who are not black because it describes Rudolph's actual experiences. From the article, quote, At one point in the book, Rudolph reflects on how hard her mother worked as a maid for a white family. There is something not right about this, Rudolph said. White folks got all the luxury, and we black folks got the dirty work. Now, Lil' Miss Karen admitted that the book is accurate, that this is what a black person would have experienced in Tennessee in the 1940s. 
The problem, however, is that, quote, it would make white students feel uncomfortable because they're being white shamed. She said the book was inappropriate because not all whites treat blacks like this. Baggett added that not all blacks do drug crimes, like a lot of people say. Wait, what? Not all black people do drug crimes. Why would you say that? What does that have to do with you banning the book? Do you think all black people do drug crimes? Did these lots of people tell you that? Hell, who are these lots of people? That's a rhetorical question. She's from Florida. We know who they are. Conservatives, particularly those in the South, have long wanted to forget the past, to kill it and those who lived it if they have to. This proved futile for years. However, third-rate Goebbels protege Christopher Rupo successfully used the left's obsession with critical race theory against him and preyed on the right, and I'll be generous, disinterest in actual history to drive up concern about anti-white racism. This in turn led some Republican politicians to push legislation that would outlaw CRT from schools and businesses. The result is that people like Lil' Miss Karen can use the law to object to any book that mentions race in a way she doesn't like. As stated in Popular Info, quote, Baggett said she challenged the book because she believed it violated the Stop Woke Act, legislation pushed by Governor Ron DeSantis and signed into law in April 2022. The legislation, among other things, prohibits instructing students that they must feel guilt, anguish because of actions in which the person played no part, committed in the past by other members of the same race, color, national origin, or sex. A section of the law that a judge struck down in November 2022, calling it positively dystopian. Quote, in his ruling Thursday, Judge Walker determined that those policies violate First Amendment free speech protections, along with due process rights in the 14th Amendment on college campuses. The law officially bans professors from expressing disfavored viewpoints in university classrooms, while permitting unfettered expression of the opposite viewpoints, wrote Walker. Defendants argue that, under this act, professors enjoy academic freedom so long as they express only those viewpoints which the state approves. This is positively dystopian. Meatball Ron's dipshit lawyers attempted to explain this away by claiming that if, quote, a professor instructs students that in some period of history, individual status as either privileged or oppressed was necessarily determined by race, that instruction does not violate the act. Except that was never the concern. The concern was that someone would do what Lil' Miss Karen did. Claimed that merely mentioning that there was race-based discrimination by white people against black people could be considered white shaming and thus violate the law. Now, Lil' Miss Karen's complaint went before 11 school advisory councils and they rejected her arguments and found the book appropriate. However, Escambia School District hadn't made a decision by the publishing of the article and they previously decided with her on banning the book The Perks of Being a Wallflower. Incidentally, Lil' Miss Karen is responsible for 148 of the 150 complaints filed in that district. She also filed a complaint about the book And Tango Makes Three, a book about the true story of two male penguins from the Central Park Zoo in New York. They seemed to form a pair bond, so a zookeeper gave them an egg, which they nested and then raised a the baby when it hatched. This is an actual thing that actually happened. However, Lil' Miss Karen claimed that the book promoted the LGBTQ agenda using penguins and that its purpose was indoctrination. Quote, in an interview, Baggett said that she objected to And Tango Makes Three because it exposes students to alternate sexual ideologies. She noted that at one point in the story, the zookeeper says these two penguins must be in love. That, she says, is sexual innuendo and K3 students are too young to even be concerned about sex. That's interesting because there's no sexual content in the book. There is no innuendo. It's just a book about two male penguins raising a baby. It gets dumber. Quote, Baggett explained her objections in more detail. I think what would happen is that a second grader would read this book and that idea would pop into the second grader's mind that these are two people of the same sex that love each other. Yeah. And? The book is about two animals of the same sex. So the complaint is that a seven-year-old would notice what they read? Or is it that you think reading the book will make them gay? That's not how that works. No one reads a book and then catches the gay. If that was how it worked, then it should work in reverse, in which case, how come there are gay people? The overwhelming majority of children's books feature straight relationships. If all it took to shape someone's sexuality was to simply see a couple, then wouldn't every gay child have caught the hetero the moment they read the Bernstein Bears? There should literally be no gay people. Of course, Lil' Miss Karen justifies her attempted ban by citing the Don't Say Gay Bill, the law passed by Florida's Bigot Brigade which outlaws the still undefined instruction on sexual orientation or gender identity in classrooms. 
Now, I'm old enough to remember the law supporters claiming that no one would try to use the law to ban any mention of gay people in schools. Yet, Lil Miss Karen said that she believes that the law can be applied that way, both to schools and their library books. And she's not the only one. In Clay County, Florida, Bruce Freeman compiled a list of 3,600 books to be banned, claiming that he was concerned about the books including porn, critical race theory, social-emotional learning, and fluid gender. One of the books he got pulled from the shelves is A Girl from the Sea, which is a coming-of-age story about two girls falling in love. According to Bubba Sparks, quote, He objects to the book being available in Clay County libraries because students are not in school to learn how to be better lesbians. The book exposes students to a land of girls making out with great illustrations, which totally doesn't sound like a thing a groomer would say. Bubba claims he's investigated between five and 10,000 books available in the county, filing dozens of challenges with the same two words, no, not I'm retarded, but protect children, which, now that I think about it, technically means the same thing. The best part is that Bubba, by his own admission, hasn't read most of the books he's challenged. Quote, Freeman acknowledged that he filed challenges over the summer without reading the challenged books. Initially, Clay County accepted many of these challenges, but Freeman said that he had already filed more than 350 challenges. Eventually, Clay County began to reject Freeman's challenges because they do not include any real explanation of the objection. There was also this bit, quote, Freeman acknowledged that he is not aware of any children who were exposed to objectionable content in a school library and had it negatively impact their lives. But he claims that it's irrelevant. I don't have to know them, Freeman said. It's all of them. Any poor kid who had the misfortune of coming across this material. Yes, you don't need proof that it happens. You just need to say it happens and everyone should believe it's true. In what Sunday school have I heard that logic before? He too cites the Don't Say Gay Bill as his justification for making baseless assumptions, saying, quote, You don't want little children questioning their budding little bodies. Which, again, totally doesn't sound like a thing a groomer or a priest would say. Of course, Bubba Sparks claims that he's fine with gay people, but also said, quote, On very rare occasions, I would meet a sexually aggressive homosexual person and have words with them. Yeah, words like, please, daddy man, do it harder. And like Lil Miss Karen, Bubba opposes books mentioning race, challenging the book Dear Martin, which is about a black Ivy League student who becomes a victim of racial profiling, because it promotes BLM and a sense of white guilt. These are just two examples of dozens of instances of book bannings across the country, most of them happening in conservative-run states. The situation in Florida is so bad that teachers are finding their classroom libraries cleared. In Manatee County, Florida, the school board mandated every K-12 public school teacher to immediately close down and pack up their classroom libraries until further notice. This wasn't based on any complaints, but simply the county's fear that they could be prosecuted if their local Karen or Bubba happened to find a book they didn't like. However, even in instances where the removals were based on complaints, many of the books were removed solely because of the complaints, not because of any actual review, which explains the high number of bans. To add more to this Orwellian nightmare, Il Duce's Department of Education, quote, decided unilaterally that all school libraries should be considered media centers, and therefore all books that are in school libraries must now be vetted by a media specialist before it can be part of a teacher's own collection. In short, Il Duce appointed a bunch of sensitivity readers. Anything that falls outside of their right-wing Christian nationalist ideology must be banned, such as books about Harriet Tubman or the legendary baseball player Roberto Clemente. Both books were part of the 176 books banned in Duval County as a result of Il Duce's law, again under the pretense that because the books mention racism against minorities, they can be construed as promoting critical race theory and anti-white sentiments. Il Duce dismissed the removal of the Clemente book, accusing the county of manufacturing the ban to create a false narrative against him. But that's a lie because the law, HB 1467, requires, as stated by the Progress Report, quote, that school districts adopt a process to vet and certify that the material in their library media centers do not violate laws against teaching students about racism or acknowledging the existence of LGBTQ people. Public school librarians and media specialists must take an hour-long online training program developed by the Florida Department of Education, during which they are warned over and over again that they cannot stock library shelves with pornography, lest they face third-degree felony charges and lose their license. In short, right-wing re-education camps. And this zeal for book banning isn't limited to Florida. It's happening in many states, most of them red states. 
As you can see from this graphic from PEN America, Texas currently holds the highest number of banned books, but several other states are catching up. According to PEN America, quote, from July 2021 to June 2022, PEN America's index of school book bans lists 2,532 instances of individual books being banned, affecting 1,648 unique book titles. Bans occurred in 138 school districts in 32 states. These districts represent 5,049 schools with a combined enrollment of nearly 4 million students. Now, this is where the conservatives come in to claim that the bans are justified because they are protecting children from sexually explicit material. Except that's not what the evidence shows. PEN America checked the subject matter of the banned books and found that the majority of them have no sexually explicit content. Of the 1,648 banned books, only 357, 22%, contained any sexual content. And this included anything from sexual intercourse to mentions of puberty to just kids dating each other. The most banned books simply featured minority, gay, or transgender characters. From PEN America, quote, 674 banned book titles, 41%, explicitly address LGBTQ themes or have protagonists or prominent secondary characters who are LGBTQ+. This includes a specific subset of titles for transgender characters or stories, 145 titles, or 9%. 659 banned book titles, 40%, contain protagonists or prominent secondary characters of color. 338 banned book titles, 21%, directly address issues of race and racism. That alone is disturbing, because it means that conservatives are simply banning books about people they don't like. It gets more disturbing when it's ideas that are banned. Again, from PEN America, quote, 161 banned book titles, 10%, have things related to rights and activism. 140 banned book titles, 9%, are either biography, autobiography, or memoir. And 64 banned book titles, 4%, include characters and stories that reflect religious minorities, such as Jewish, Muslim, and other faith traditions. Now, you might be tempted to say that this removes any plausible deniability from the right. No conservative can claim that they are open-minded or tolerant or welcoming of others in light of such evidence. And to a certain degree, that's true. However, you have to factor in that many on the right are in a political bubble. Many conservatives only consume right-leaning content. As a result, they may have only heard of two or three of the books with so-called objectionable material. Most of them have never read the books. They simply repeat what they saw and heard in right-wing media, which is often little more than propaganda, to the point that some conservatives may genuinely believe that all of the 1,648 banned books are full of sexually explicit content, even though I just presented evidence showing that they're not. Most, however, simply don't bother to check, because they're hearing what fits their narrative. This is a tendency of ideologues, and we're seeing it on full display. This isn't about protecting the children. This is about power and control. Whatever ideologues accuse their enemies of doing, that's what they intend to do. This is about controlling the ideas that shape society. And the right is all about making sure that those ideas fit their narrow conservative Christian nationalist ideological position. If that means banning books, censoring ideas, or memory-holding history that may contradict or refute their narrative, so be it. Stephen King said it best, quote, People who want certain books out of schools or out of the libraries will tell you that they want to protect their children from certain ideas, certain words, and certain views of American life and the human condition. The fact that they are denying these things to all the other kids around their own, well, they'll say, that's just too bad. Tough titty, said the kitty, but the milk's not warm. Push them a little further, and they'll invoke family values, a phrase which more and more frequently makes me feel like collapsing into a fit of projectile vomiting. Censorship and suppression of reading materials are rarely about family values, and almost always about control, about who is snapping the whip, who is saying no, and who is saying go. Censorship's bottom line is this. If the novel Christine offends me, I don't just want to make sure it's kept from my kid, I want to make sure it's kept from your kid as well, and all the kids. This bit of intellectual arrogance, undemocratic and as old as time, is best expressed this way. If it's bad for me and my family, it's bad for everyone's family. Yet when books are run out of school classrooms and even out of school libraries as a result of this idea, I'm never much disturbed, not as a citizen, not as a writer, not even as a school teacher, which I used to be. What I tell kids is this, don't get mad, get even. Don't spend time waving signs or carrying petitions around the neighborhood. Instead, run, don't walk, to the nearest non-school library or to the local bookstore and get whatever it was that they banned.
Read whatever they're trying to keep out of your eyes and your brain, because that's exactly what you need to know. But what do I know? I'm just some guy.